I have a bad feeling about this. Rebels and Imperials, Jedi and Sith, I have come back from Rogue One and let me say, it was awesome! I am blown away. Oh, and by the way, uh, I just don't know why they had to go on such a huge mission to get the Death Star plans when I got them right here. Seriously, Rebels? Could save some time, some lives. Before I start, start into my review, I'm just gonna warn everyone here, this review is spoiler heavy. So be warned. I think I'm gonna give you 12 parsecs. Ready, set, go. I need to say it, this movie fits in perfectly well with the rest of the Star Wars saga. It was, I just don't know how to describe it. It was like a nice mesh. It basically uh, tied in Revenge of the Sith into A New Hope. Although it does, uh, I will say, Revenge of the Sith is just more of an acknowledgement that it happened, but it naturally does uh, blend in perfectly with A New Hope, and it pretty much, the movie stops right where A New Hope begins. The movie can stand alone on its own. Person personally, I don't think you need to know much about Star Wars to go in and enjoy it. It does help, I mean, giving the, the franchise a once-over might be a very good idea. Let's start uh, talk, discussing the new characters. Everybody dies. Yeah, all the new characters, gone, kaput. They became one with the force. They ain't coming back anytime soon, which is, a, you know what? It's sad, but you do see the greater sacrifice in what their mission does for the galaxy as a whole. These, act, these characters gave their lives to ensure other people will have hope. And hope is definitely a big theme of this movie, as it does lead into episode four, A New Hope. I mean, the primary focus on this uh, movie is Felicity Jones' character, Jin Erso. She is the daughter of uh, the man who actually uh, created the firing mechanism for the Death Star, Galen Erso. And early on in the film, uh, Galen Urso is re-recruited uh, by the film baddie Orson Krennic, who's director. His goal is basically to ensure that the Death Star is completed, as apparently it's been fallen behind schedule. So he re-recruits him, kills Galen's wife, leaving Jin by herself. She's taken, saved by Saw Gerrera, Forrest Whitaker's character. I'll get more into Saw uh, Gerrera in a bit as uh, there's he has a little more of an impact in the whole Star Wars universe so I'll come back to him so lo and behold eventually years pass rebels intercept the whole transmission about the Death Star Gail Erso sent out an Imperial pilot who's defected named Bodhi Rook and he goes to find Saw Guerrera to get give the plans as per Galen. The rebels send an intelligence officer named Cassian Andor and his uh, co-pilot uh, K2SO who has got to be I think one of the best original characters in this movie although he does die he's probably the only one that there is a possibility to come back after all he is a robot it's transferring his memory or uh, rebuilding him isn't a problem and I really do hope they bring him back in some capacity as his character was hilarious I mean it really puts C-3PO, R2-D2 and BB-8 to shame so eventually as things happen people everyone meets up they eventually meet the blind warrior Chirut Imwe uh, very cool character uh, your traditional blind monk really who can believes in the force and he's think of him as daredevil he knows what's going to happen before it actually does and he's able to anticipate it i mean he could take down a whole squadron of stormtroopers and his mon mantra is more or less i believe in the force the force believes in me or something like that i don't really remember it offhand but he does have uh have something that to go with and uh he does have a companion baze malbus who is a war rebel warrior and mercenary they work really well together. So yeah, as I mentioned, all these characters die. Now I want to come back to Saw Gerrera as uh, it's worth mentioning that he's not an original character for the movie. He actually has appeared in uh, 
Star Wars The Clone Wars, the animated series. Uh, I think it was a four-part uh, episode, a uh, series of episodes, I should say. And uh, he was an original creation of George Lucas, probably one of George Lucas's last or original creations. So it's good to finally see him in flesh and blood, so to say. You never know. Uh, we'll probably see more of him in Star Wars Rebels. Uh, it's definitely a possibility. As the I believe the events of Rebels take place five years before New Hope. So we shall definitely, uh, most likely at some point, see him or he'll be mentioned in some way or another. Now I just want to come back to the surprises and re returning characters. Genevieve O'Reilly. Uh, reprises her role as Mon Mothma. Uh, now, a lot of people might be saying, wait a second, when was she Mon Mothma? We only see Mon Mothma in uh, Return of the Jedi. That's true. However, uh, she did film some scenes as Mon Mothma in, for Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. Uh, they all landed on the cutting room floor, and actually, if you get the uh, Revenge of the Sith DVD, you can watch her deleted scenes in there. She does play Mon Mothma. You do see the uh, rebellion starting to form. I kind of wish they kept it in the movie, but it is what it is. But she does reprise her role. Uh, big surprise was to see Jimmy Smith reprising his role as Bail Organa. Definitely uh, he aged, which is to be expected. It ties in very nicely. Um, Mon Mothma and, J and uh, Bail Organa. Uh, do indeed uh, make mention of the Clone Wars and they acknowledge Obi-Wan Kenobi, not by name, but uh, uh, a Jedi Knight friend is how he's referred to, but we all know it's Kenobi. Uh, as if you've seen A New Hope, you know that's where that storyline goes. And it's sad when you, when you see uh, Bail Organa say, I'm going back to Alderaan, because you know what's going to happen, you know he's going to die. It's just one of those unfortunate scenes, but it's something that does need to be done. Then we got uh, some other recurring characters. Uh, Anthony Daniels does reprise his role as C-3PO. It's a very brief cameo, as is R2-D2. The big surprise is Peter Cushion. Yes, he returned from the dead and reprised his role as Grand Moff Tarkin. He did, and you know what? Uh, it was clearly clear it was another actor, but they CGI Peter Cushion's face onto Grand Moff Tarkin, and my god, uh, I swear it was the same man. On top of that, they also did the same thing with Princess Leia. Yeah, you get to see the 77 uh, version of Princess Leia. Carrie Fisher's voice, but she looks like she did in A New Hope. So, now it brings me on to the stuff I did not like the, about the movie. First off, we all knew it was coming, they gave us advance warning, but there just was no opening crawl. Yeah, I get it. Uh, it's not part of the episodic movies, but Star Wars needs its opening crawl. Yeah, it's true. They did do something similar with the other lesser known Star Wars movies, so to say. The Ewoks movie, otherwise known as The Caravan of Courage, and the sequel, Battle for Endor. And let's not forget the complete garbage that is the Star Wars holiday special whose sole redeeming quality is the fact that it's Boba Fett's first appearance. I guess the reason why I'm taking this opening crawl thing a little too seriously with this movie is, let's face it, the first paragraph of the opening crawl for A New Hope pretty much is the inspiration for this film. Just read it and you got the whole idea of what this movie is about. Now, I want to discuss, where was the John Williams music? John Williams is Star Wars. He's all about these franchises. I get it, he's getting on in years. Let's use him while we can. I don't know, that just bugs me. The composer did a great job. He did use some of the original music, like the Force theme and the Imperial March, but I just want to stick to what works. Finally, I guess that's about it. Go see this movie, it's amazing. You'll love it. If, frankly, I think everyone who's watching this review has already seen the movie, because I told everyone else to leave, as I'm gonna spoil it. But go see it again, tell people go see it. This movie was incredible. It does justice to the franchise. And we've got to see what, they, what comes next. Up next, I believe it's episode eight, still as of yet untitled, followed by, I think, the first Han Solo uh, solo movie. Huh. 
see what I did there. Well, until next time, may the I'm out of here, and may the force be with you.